This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. He held my cab in front of the rent law arms. See, the swank building on the avenue, see? Well, I see you standing there waving your arms around like a cheerleader. Can't you stand uh, still? Stand it. still and keep quiet. I got it. All right, all right. Now, you... wait a minute. Go on, Gabby. Go on. You pick this fella up in front of the rent law arms. Yeah, a swell dresser, too. Lots of money. You could see. Well, I could tell by his clothes, see? Good fit, good material. I know clothes, see? Uh -huh. All right, where's the body? Who was murdered or who did the shooting? Now, this is the homicide department, well, you know? Well, I don't care what the department is as long as it's police. And it says police outside in the street. Never mind. Police. Never mind. Something crazy happened this evening, you say? Now, what was it? Well, I took this rich guy with the ritzy duds to 10th Street, see? Uh-huh. But not to one of them broken-down tenements there. No? No, something even worse. Well, from what I've seen of some of the places down there, what could be worse? A vacant lot. A vacant lot between the tenements. Huh? It's 2020 10th, you see? Just the address. He says, take me. And he gets out just like he lives there, see? And he starts to walk into the lot. Well, so what? He what? probably walks straight through the lot to the back door of the building on 11th Street. Oh, no, Sergeant. That's just the crazy thing about it. Huh. I'm making out my report, you see. Takes just a second, see? No longer would it take the guy to go a few steps into the vacant lot and... And? Well, I look back to see what's in the lot and see where this guy is going, see? And he's the only thing I don't see. He's gone. Disappeared. And, Sergeant... There was absolutely no place the guy could disappear to. Want a beer with flavor? A flavor that's delightfully, deliciously different? Try that smooth beer. Try Champagne Velvet, the beer with the million-dollar flavor. Thank you, my friend, for a very happy suggestion. It's worth repeating. Try that smooth beer. But Champagne Velvet is more than just that. It's a beer with a rare and unusual flavor combination. It's bright and sparkling from foam to finish. It's light and lively with a clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure. And best of all, it has the rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor that stamps it as a beer of real premium quality. Premium quality that costs you... No premium in price. Light and lively, bright and sparkling, yet just as smooth. What a flavor combination. And you're sure it's pure. And now on to Dick Comar as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friend. <laughs> <laughs> the story in the newspaper, Mary. What is it? A cab driver took a man from the rent law arms to a vacant lot at 2020 10th Street. Look what a neighborhood that is. <laughs> the cabby's passenger must have thought so, too, because he disappeared. Oh, without paying his fare? No, without going any further than the middle of the lot. Oh, Blackie, what a ridiculous story. <laughs> well, don't blame me for it, Mary. Blame the cab driver. Oh, He's the one who told him. I wasn't blaming anyone. Else. I merely read it. And laughed at it, thank goodness. Why not? Well, for a minute, I thought you were going to say you were interested in the case. Mary, I've been intrigued by a lot of interesting things. Things that seemed impossible. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't interest me a bit, because what this cabbie claims his passenger did absolutely and positively can't be done. Right. Except. Except what? I'm suddenly developing a conviction that it was. <laughs> Nothing can be as bad as that. Oh, dear Officer Wilson, you're a sight to see. You're a sight to see yourself, Mrs. Brady, running down the street as if you were being chased. Oh, dear Officer Wilson, there's a dead man right on the front steps of my house. Oh, come on, let's have a look at this, Mrs. Brady. Who is the man? One of the tenants in the building? I don't know. I couldn't bear to look. I was just sitting on my stoop enjoying the fresh air after the rain and talking with my nephew when this body appeared out of nowhere on the steps before me. Well, you certainly have a crowd in front of your building, Mrs. Brady. We'll have to push our way through. Well, I'll help you, Officer Winston. 
Get back there, Kevin. Come on, get back there. 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 I've got Officer Wilson in here with me to look after the poor man. Hey, somebody go for a doctor right away. The fellow might still be alive. I'll go for him. I'll get him. Dear, here he be, Officer Wilson. Lying just as he fell. Stand back, everybody. Stand back now. Stand back. That's better. Oh, dear, the poor man. I wonder who he be. Whoever he is, he was rich or knew how to dress. Oh, my, my. These are fine, expensive clothes he's wearing. Oh, yes. He looks as if he might have been dressed for a wedding or a funeral. He is dressed for a funeral. His own. Come in. Oh, Inspector Faraday, oh, I... Uh, come in, Matthews. Any word from the Identification Bureau on that man found dead on 11th Street? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's one of the several things I came to tell you. There, there, there's nothing on him at the Identification Bureau. Oh, fine. Yeah. What yeah. else? Well, we found these uh, little slips of paper in the dead man's clothing uh, hidden in a secret inside pocket. Clues, you think? Well, I don't know to what. Huh? <laughs> yeah, here's one that says... Um, Lotsley, 25. What? Yeah. Here's another that says Medican, 10. And another one saying Larkin, 50. Larkin? Yeah, they're written in ink, a man's hand. Maybe the dead man's. Well, I don't know what they mean. Yeah, me too. Anything else? Yeah, yeah. The medical examiner said the guy died of a fractured larynx and crushed windpipe. That's a big help. What else? Well, nothing else except that marks on the dead man's fingers show that he normally wore two big rings. And they're missing like everything else, huh? Yep. Identification, money, jewelry, the worst. That's right. Which right. might mean that it was murder in the act of robbery. Probably. Yeah. I wish I knew who the dead guy was, though. Me too. Might explain why he was in 11th Street and dressed as well as he was. It could be. Hey, maybe this ties up with that crazy story the cab driver told you. Well, maybe. Anyhow, I'll contact the missing persons bureau inspector. They might have already it. done that. No dice. Well, it looks as if we're going to have a tough time finding out who the man was. Yeah, Matthews, we have a body without a name. But I want that name. I've got to have it. Sure, too. It's awful tough to find the killer, unless I find out who's been killed. I didn't have nothing to do with it, see? I just took this guy from the rent law arms to the lot on 10th Street, Sergeant Matt. Yeah, yeah, I know that, cabbie. I just want you to see if this man found dead on 11th Street is the man you drove to 10th Street tonight. Well, I ain't never looked at no dead body before. <laughs> This dead body's never seen you either, so don't worry. Yeah. In here. This this is the morgue, huh? It isn't the lobby of the bijou. Yeah, this is where we put the body. All right, come on over here. Well, I, I'd sooner watch from over here. See, it's it's closer to the door, see? I said come here. We want to know if this is the guy you took to 10th Street tonight, and you can't identify him from way over there. Yeah, but I've got good eyesight. I can see a mile, see? All I want you to see is if this is the same man. Oh. Hey, open your eyes, will you, and tell me if you know this guy. Well, open both of them and take a good look. Well, how can I take a good look at something that ain't good? Was this the guy you drove to the lot on 10th Street? That's him, all right. He disappeared from the lot, and now... He disappeared from the world. Well, Faraday, Mary and I just talked to a dead man's wife. What dead man's wife? The man found strangled on 11th Street. I had a hunch it might be the same man let out of that cab in front of the vacant lot on 10th Street. I read the story of how he disappeared. And then he told the address where the cab driver had picked him up, so we decided to come here and find out who he was, which we did. You did? Huh? Yes. That's well, what that's I what I was about to do. What was his name? Richard Allister. Mrs. Allister thinks it was her husband who was found dead. Uh, she had an idea it was her husband when she heard a description of his clothing on the radio. Matthews just took that cabbie to the morgue, and he identified the body as that of the man he took to the lot on 10th Street. Uh-huh. If this woman's husband has disappeared, it's Allister, all right. Then we know who the dead man was, don't we? Yeah, but that's all we know. There wasn't anything in his clothing but these crazy pieces of paper. Well, what are they, Inspector? Just a frat? Not quite, Miss Wesley, but they might as well be for all the good they do me. May I see them, Perry? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Thanks. Hmm. Hmm. Names and numbers on them. Odd names, aren't they? Nothing but. Lotsley, Medican, Larkin. I suppose you know exactly what they mean, too, don't you, genius? No, Perry, I have the slightest idea, but I'll tell you something I do know. What? If we take a look at that vacant yard at 2020 10th Street where Alistair disappeared... We may find out a lot about this case. <laughs> <laughs> 
Johnny, but I just heard on the radio in one of the apartments under us in Mrs. Brady's where the door was open. Yeah. They know who was killed tonight. They know it was Alice. No, 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 no. There's nothing to get excited about. Here. Here's a cut from the dough we took from Alistair. Maybe that'll cool you down. Ah, oh, Johnny, is this all I get? You know that's all you ever get. But you get so much more. All I get is... Enough to keep you out of trouble. Not so much you'll get into trouble. He got rid of his jewelry, his paper and things. Yeah, but I want some dough to buy clothes and stuff. You got a suit, ain't you? Yeah, I got quit scraping. All you need is pocket money, so all you get is pocket money. Now, help me pack. We're leaving? Uh-huh. Then you are scared the cops will find out Alistair was up here, ain't you? No, Billy boy. Just playing it safe. Uh-huh. Even if the cops find out he was killed right here in this building, they'll never find out how he got in this room. walked into this lot since Alistair did. Hmm? There's only one set of footprints in that plane, too. I see them. Well, let's follow them and see where they go, Blackie. Keep your flashlight on his footprints instead of waving it around, will you? No. And come on. Let's see if they go all the way to the back door of the building on 11th Street. That's the only place they can go. See? They're going straight to the building on 11th Street now. Yeah, so far. But what? Uh-oh. Hey, what happened here? We haven't crossed the lot yet, but the footprints stopped after only a couple of steps. How did Alistair get out of the lot ten feet from the back of the building and end up dead on the other side of it? I think I know how that might have happened, Faraday. But, oh, brother, is it going to be tough to prove. Premium quality, yes, sir. Premium quality that is yours to enjoy at no premium in price. Now, that's something worth remembering. But every time you pour your glass of champagne velvet, you're reminded that you're enjoying a real premium quality beer at no premium in price. You know, of course, that more costly malt and grain, higher-priced hops, and more careful and costly brewing methods are all a part of C.D.'s famous million-dollar formula. So C.D. has to have unmistakable premium quality. C.D.'s flavor tells you all of that. It's bright and sparkling, light and lively from foam to finish, with the rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor of a real honest-to-goodness beer. Real premium quality beer. But that's not all. It has a clear, clean taste, given it by controlled aging. A taste that makes you sure it's pure. And it's smooth, 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 just as smooth. And now, back to Boston Blackie. Wealthy Richard Allister gets out of a cab at a vacant lot and seconds later disappears. Later, strangled to death, Allister is found on the front steps of the building adjoining the vacant lot. Boston Blackie and Inspector Faraday find, however, that Allister walked only a few steps into the lot where he stopped. As we return to our story, Johnny Kane and his frightened friend, Billy Evans, have moved from their rooms on 11th Street and are in their new hideout. I'm still scared, Johnny. I'm still scared they'll find us. That was Boston Blackie and the inspector in the lot on 10th Street while we were moving out. Yeah, I heard. I heard him talking while we still had the window open, too. Yeah, well... Well, What are you worrying about, Bill? They'll find out Alistair was in our room, and then they'll find us. They aren't going to find us because they'll never figure out how Alistair got from that lot into our room without leaving any footprints. Hey, what do you got in your hand? Nothing. I heard something jiggling in your hand. Let me see what it is, Billy. All right. I, I just couldn't toss the jewelry in the sewer like you said. What? You don't give me much dough, so I thought I'd keep them instead. This stuff, huh? Hey. Alistair's rings and watch and chain and other stuff. Hey. I told you to take everything of his and throw it away. I threw the wallet and his papers away, Johnny, but I just I couldn't... Stop. No, Johnny, don't hit me. Well, then do what you're told. Go out and toss that stuff in a sewer somewhere. All right, Johnny. But what about Blackie and that police inspector? Well, I'm not worried about them, Billy. I'll never know what happened in the middle of that lot down there. Bye, 
Jackie, you looked up the odd names and found that all three of them had the same address, this one. And here we are to talk to the janitor. If you ever answered the bell I rang, Mary. Oh, dear. Seems like an hour that we've been standing out here. Uh, well, that's because my company is so pleasant. Actually, it's only been 30 seconds. And besides, yes. I'm not... Uh-oh, uh, you're the janitor in this building? I sure ain't the owner wearing overalls because I like to rough it, son. Well, do you mind if we ask you a few questions? We? Yeah. You ask the questions, Blackie. I'll just listen for answers. <laughs> That's really what I meant, Mary. Well, son, you're that famous Boston Blackie, ain't you? Thought I'd seen your face somewhere before. I'm interested in three men uh, named uh, Lotsley, Medican, and Larkin. Well, them three live right here in my building in three different apartments. What do you want with them? Mostly, I want to know who their friends were. Strange you should ask that. You know that fellow they found dead, that Alistair? Yes. I seen his picture in the papers. I recollect he used to call on them. He and a couple other guys. A couple of other guys, huh? Yeah. What do they look like? Well, the fellows whose names you mentioned tell you better than I could. Why not ask them? You've got something there, and I hope I get something when I see them. Still open for business? Well, I was just closing up, but I think I have time for one more customer. Well, how much will you give me for these rings and this watch and chain? I need some money. All right. Let's have a look at them, young man. Sure. Here you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Expensive rings, young man. And a uh, fine watch and chain. You must have seen better days. Eh? Yeah, a lot better. Hurry up. How much will you give me? Well, excuse me a minute while I look at these in the back room under a different light. Sure, hmm? but make it snappy, will you? I'll be right with you, young man. Operator. Get me the police department right away. Homicide department and hurry. One minute. I thought you might pull something like this. I'm glad I came back. No, no. Police department. Hello. Hello. Police department. Hello. Hello. Oh, Inspector Faraday. Gee, I was hoping you'd get here pretty soon. Another murder tonight, huh, Sergeant Matthews? Yep. Who got it this time? Well, the owner of this pawn shop. I, I checked the call I got, and this is what we found. This guy here strangled to death with the phone still off the hook. Oh. Killed for calling the police. Yeah. What do you think it means, Matthews? Well, it means just one thing. Someone was here to sell stuff that was stolen. Maybe the stuff of Alistair. Yeah. Yeah, we sent the word around to all pawn shops to report to us if anyone brought the stuff in. And Alistair's killer knocked off this guy, too, huh? Well, it might be the same guy or someone who bought the stuff from Alistair's killer. Well, in either case, this might be a lead to Alistair's killer. If the stuff was offered for sale once, it must be offered for sale again. Maybe. Well, all we have to do is wait. The only disturbing thing is, I got an idea Boston Blackie isn't waiting. <laughs> You know, you haven't said two words all the way back to your apartment? Yeah, I was just thinking. You didn't get that much to think about from those three men you talked to, did you? No, well, I found out from them that Alistair was in the numbers racket for those two other men, Mary. Oh? That was the meaning of those slips of paper in Alistair's secret pocket, which is what I figured. Yeah, I know. Come on in. Okay. Here's the paper saying Lotsley 25 meant Mr. Lotsley had bet 25 cents and so on. Yes. Oh. And I have a description of Alistair's two pals who used to accompany him. Yeah. I'm going to call Faraday. You must feel like insulting somebody. I couldn't very well do it to you, could I? You wouldn't want to, would you? <laughs> I bet Faraday won't talk to you. He's probably busy with that second killing we heard about on your car radio. You know, the strangling of the pawnbroker. Yeah, he'll talk to me. I told Faraday I thought I knew how Alistair was able to disappear from the edge of the lot. Mm -hmm. Now I think I know why he was killed and by whom. Faraday, homicide. Hey, hello, Faraday. This is Blackie. I'm not again. Yes, and I know you're working on the murder of that pawnbroker. Remember I said I knew how Alistair got out of that lot without leaving footprints? I don't care what you said. Well, you might care when I tell you it's possible that that pawnbroker was killed by someone trying to sell the jewelry stolen from Alistair after that someone killed him. 
Now, if his two partners lived in that building on 11th Street, next to the lot, yeah. then the two partners killed him. How'd you dream up this two partners idea? I'll let you know later. Don't bother. Alistair was killed by strangulation, wasn't he? Yeah. It might have been a rope around his neck that caused his death. Hey, I think you got something. The two guys dropped a noose from the roof of the 11th Street building and yanked him up. That would account for his disappearance. Right. Now we've got to find those two guys for one reason. Murder. Mrs. Brady, I, uh, I understand you know everything that goes on in this building. Well, I, I just sit here in my room with my door open, mind my own business, and the doings of others are plain, Blackie. Well, we know you discovered Mr. Alistair's body in the front of the building, Mrs. Brady. Oh, yes, that I did, that I did, yes. Uh, tell me, have you seen anything unusual since the time of the killing, Mrs. Brady? Well, now, you know, those two men from the top floor moved out this morning. Really? Yes, they did. They moved out with, with all their furniture and their baggage, too. Oh, that's very interesting. Yes, they did. And, and they've been living here, you know, for about five years now or more. Two men, huh? Mm-hmm. What are the names? Do you know? Yes, yes, I do now. The one, the one's name was Johnny Kane. He's the tall one, you know, the tall, quiet one. And, and the little frightened man, you know, he, he was called Billy Evans. Do you know where they moved to? No, no, I don't. Nobody knows. They wouldn't tell you. Hey, do you think they killed that poor Mr. Alistair? Think it, Mrs. Brady? I know it. I wish I knew where to find them. Oh, hello, Mary. Hi. Say, for the love of Pete, what took you so long to call? That was a long list you gave me. Well, mine was just as long, and I finished it in 15 minutes. Well, you're smart. And besides, I ran into some talkative people, and curious ones. They asked me more questions than I asked them. Well, I hope you've got at least one good answer to yours. Mm-hmm. I didn't have any luck at all. Well, I did. Good work. Oh, it wasn't anything any red-blooded American citizen wouldn't do. Now, never mind the description of your citizenship. Okay. Do you know where I can find the two cold-blooded citizens I'm looking for? Uh Uh-huh. I do, Blackie. But look, you be careful when you walk in on them. Hmm. Because what might happen to you when you do makes my blood almost as cold as theirs. Get up off that floor and come here. No, Johnny, don't knock me around anymore. You killed a guy, do you understand that? I know, but we killed Alistair and you didn't get sore about that. Alistair deserved getting killed. He was holding out on us. Yeah. Him. Getting richer every minute and we have to live in a dump. Well, our pawnbroker was double-crossing me. He was calling the cops. Well, he wouldn't have had to call him if you hadn't tried to sell that stuff to him. Ah, oh, Johnny. All right, now get up. I'm going to teach you to do what you're told. No, Johnny, no. If you won't get up, I'll pull you up. No, Johnny, no. Now, this is for being a bad boy. <laughs> Here's one to sleep on. <laughs> Gee, you dumb jerk. All right, Kane, don't move or you'll be where your friend is. Uh, who are you? Boston Blackie, and I heard your little conversation with Billy. Oh. You two are the ones I'm looking for. How'd you find me? You'll find out at headquarters. I think you'll find out that my friend here isn't the only one I can put to sleep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Sorry, friend. But when you wake up, you'll find out that I don't sleep in the daytime. Aren't you glad you listened to me? As usual, I was right. Okay, go ahead and brag. <laughs> so you were right, Blackie. Hollister was pulled out of that lot by a rope thrown around his neck. Hollister was killed for holding out on Kane and Evans. The pawnbroker was killed by Evans trying to sell Hollister's jewelry. That's right. What do you want, applause? Sure, if you feel like applauding, go ahead. Uh, maybe I will. When you tell me how you found Kane and Evans after they moved out of that building on 11th Street. Well, Mrs. Brady, one of the tenants, said they moved out with their furniture. That means that they had to use a van. It does. Generally, it does, Inspector. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, Mary and I checked all the moving companies in the book until we found the one that moved two men from 11th Street. I got a little news for you. What's that? My men were checking the companies when you broke in on Kane and Evans. That's possible. I knew you'd think of that, too. But I got lucky. I found the right company pretty quickly. You're always getting lucky. Someday I'll get lucky and you won't bother me. Two heads are better than one, Inspector. I guess that's the answer. Mm -hmm. But, Blackie, do me a favor. What? 
As long as two heads are better than one, why don't you wear both of yours at the same time? On you, it would look good. <laughs> <laughs> Make mine CV, because for me, there is no finer beer, and it's just as smooth. Make mine CV. So many folks who know good beer when they taste it have said just that. Time after time, the Champagne Velvet is not only the leading beer by far in its home state of Indiana, but it is preferred by particular people everywhere that it is sold. There is only one reason for that, and that is flavor, the bright sparkling, light and lively flavor of a real premium quality beer. Premium quality that costs you no premium in price. The rich, robust, and full-bodied flavor of real, honest-to-goodness beer. And the clear, clean taste that makes you sure it's pure. So make yours CV. Because for you, there is no finer beer. You're sure it's pure. And it's just as smooth. And now, here is a preview of what happens next week. With a gal like this one, what makes you think I was following you? Hi, wait a minute. Hey, she's I... kind of cute. Oh. Hey, sister, how about going out with a real guy? Hey, take your hand off my oh, face. don't be that way. Step aside, Mary. Look how There's you. a surprise coming in here. It... Now, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, nice hitting, Blackie. Should I start counting you for him? Yes, that might be a very I good. Three, I heard the four. lady call you Black. That must be Boston Black. Can you tell me the time? The time? What for? You're keeping a diary? Blackie, you knocked this guy down and he wants to know the time. Sure I do. And as for knocking me down, well, Blackie just did me the biggest favor anybody ever did for me in all my life. Cerebral Cinema hopes you have enjoyed this movie of the mind. 